Thanks for joining us again. This is Barry Kazire. Get ready for some real live marketing. Are you a small business owner that is confused over your accounting records? Accounting by Art can help you eliminate this confusion with a free initial one-to-one consultation. Art offers QuickBooks training seminars covering both QuickBooks desktop and QuickBooks online, as well as addressing your specific needs and questions. Visit accountingbyart.com and set up your free consultation today. If you're looking for high quality ink for your home or office at a great price, CR Office Technologies Inc. has the ink you need at the price you want. Visit CROfficetech.com. That's CROfficetech.com to get the price, the quality, and the service you've been looking for. Hi, this is Barry Kazire, and welcome back to Real Live Marketing. With our guest today, Amanda, we're going to be discussing video, the importance of video. Now, it's been said that a picture is worth a thousand words, and it's also been said that a moving picture is worth a million people. Now, the statistics definitely back that up, and the importance of video is not in question at all. Some of the statistics are pretty astounding. Over 40 billion videos are streamed in the U.S. each month. 75 million people watch videos online each month. YouTube earlier this year was noted as being the second largest search engine. While on YouTube alone, we've got more than 1 billion unique visitors each month. Over 6 billion hours of video are watched each month on YouTube. That's about an hour for every person on earth. A hundred hours of video are uploaded every minute to YouTube. And just so we don't leave mobile out of the picture, mobile makes up for about 40% of YouTube's global watch time. So in today's show, we're gonna give you some great tips for the utilization of video. And right after the show, I'm gonna give you a short list of five things that you must keep in mind if you're gonna make an amateur video. We're going to go over in the show today when to use an amateur and when to use a professional. And if you're going to do an amateur video, there I'm going to give you five things that you must keep in mind. We'll get right into our interview with Amanda here right after a word from our sponsors. Feeling lost with accounting, bookkeeping, or payroll for your small business? Accounting by Art offers a free one-on-one consultation for the state of your business. Art Stump has years of experience helping small business owners with their accounting needs. He also offers QuickBooks training seminars covering both QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online, as well as addressing your specific needs and questions. Seminar participants also get a free one-hour office visit after the class to be sure their QuickBook issues are solved to their satisfaction. Mention this ad at your consultation and get 10% off initial services when you sign up and pay for your first month. Visit accountingbyart.com today and get started. Tired of high prices and low service when purchasing ink for your home or office printer? CR Office Technologies offers their hassle-free guarantee. If it's not right, we'll make it right. They know that customer service is number one. At CR Office Technologies, you get great service on top of great products at prices that you can't beat. They have laser and fax toner cartridges, inkjet cartridges and paper, laser fuses and drum kits, copier toners, and more. Visit CROfficetech.com. That's CROfficetech.com to get the price, quality, and service that you've been looking for. Great. So here we are with Real Live Marketing, and we're here with our guest, Amanda Ashinger. How are you doing, Amanda? I am great. Thank you. Good. 
Uh, Amanda is with uh, uh, the name of your company. Amanda is Solstice Productions, like the summer winter solstice. That's great. Where'd you pick that name? Um, my husband's birthday is the summer solstice. We got married on the winter solstice. He's my business partner, okay. and um, solstice is a turning point, and all story should be about turning points. That's great. That's great. Well, today we're gonna. That's fantastic. So today we're gonna talk about uh, video and how to use video in your marketing. Uh, as, as a marketing tool. Yep, sounds good. Great. Good. And uh, so you're uh, here in St. Louis now. Is this where you're from? Uh, this is where I'm from. I took a detour for to New York and then Hollywood um, and came back about 14 years ago now to St. Louis. Great. Did you do video in New York and Hollywood I as did well? not. I was an actress and okay. um, I produced and directed some theater Great. And um, acted in L.A. I acted in about 100 film and TV shows. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Anything we know? Uh, yeah. It was in um, Wild Wild West. I did JAG. I did a bunch of Boy Meets World with um, oh, really? Fred. No, not Fred Savage. Ben Savage. Uh -huh. uh, Magnolia. I used to watch era. Boy Meets World with my little girls. Well, you may have seen me. <laughs> Were you, you did a bunch of them? I did it? a bunch of them. They're in their college years, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. So you, were you one of the main characters? No, or? I was not one of the main characters. You, I was one of the college students. One of the yes. college students. Okay, yeah. good, good. Yep. So do you have speaking parts? Uh, no, a lot most in a few, but mostly, you know, background, okay. stand-in, that kind oh. of very glamorous work. That's yes. great. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It was great. Um, it was really interesting. And uh, the best part about it was being able to um, talk to everybody. So the, the other actors, the electricians, the um, camera people, the directors, the producers, um, the pr producers' parents sometimes were on set. And that was fun because you got to hear kind of the background story of, oh, we were really hoping he would do whatever. But then... And um, and really see how how those careers are built, um, and talk to people about you know things that you really if you're not on set seeing it's difficult to learn. It's hard to learn in a, you know a classroom setting. Yeah, I mean there's so many pieces and parts yeah. to to mm -hmm. film. So what would you say? I mean I know that I've I've been studying about video a little bit here and there. I know one of the things is that the longer the production, uh, the higher the quality. That's one of the rules that I picked up when I was studying. If you're going to do a short little video, you can get away with uh, maybe using your iPhone, and maybe you know depending <laughs> on what you're what it is you're producing and how intelligent you go about it. But I know that if you get into anything any of any length, and by mm -hmm. any length I mean over two minutes, yeah, you've got to start upgrading the quality of your production tremendously. Otherwise, the person might as well. Uh, listen to you on like an iPod or you know like a podcast like this um, yeah I mean in order to make this into a video mm -hmm. uh, type situation we'd have to do quite a bit Light, yes. lighting set yeah. makeup three cameras uh, a director cam yeah, technical whole, director yes yeah there'd be a whole different yeah. game you right know? and so uh, whereas I could maybe you know I, I could take a 10 second video saying hi mm -hmm. you know introducing the a video I could do that with my iPhone probably, uh, but uh, but any uh, to have anything of any length, you really have to invest some money in production quality. Yes, um, I don't entirely agree with you. Okay, but I don't entirely disagree. Um, I think that it's more about the purpose than the length. I do completely agree. You know, maybe you have an audience that you want to share a little. 10 second clips, 30 second clips, messages. As long as your messaging is strong and it's those little short clips, you could definitely do it with your camp, with your phone or something like that. But your messaging has to be strong. It has to be to a specific audience for a specific reason. Um, but I mean, you know, uh, if you watch any branded television commercial, those are 15 to 30 seconds long. Mm -hmm. Those are half million dollar productions sure. at the, right? Yeah. Um, so it's not necessarily about length, but it's really about your purpose. Okay. Right. So you, they want a brand to stick. They want to elevate their brand. And so it's important that that production is strong as well. Um, however, for a business owner, like I say, if it's a, um, I'll just take a example. If it's, you, a marketing professional, and you want to send out a marketing tip and you're going to tweet it out or Facebook it or whatever to a given audience, you just want to say, hey, quick marketing tip of the day. It has a nice immediacy 
and an intimacy if you shoot it with your camera phone, mm-hmm. right? But that's a completely different purpose. So I'd say it's more about purpose. More about purpose than than yeah than than length. Okay. Um, but I totally agree with you. If you did, I think if you did more than thirty to forty five seconds, unless your content was amazing, if you shot more than that, uh, that would you lose people very quickly. Unless your quality is... Unless the quality is there. Okay, mm-hmm. so once you get to a certain length, your quality's got to be there. Yes. But for a shorter video, you might need the quality as well, depending, depending upon... Depending on the purpose. The purpose. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, some of my favorite videos are... Um, I like this. Uh, the videos uh, by a group called Common Craft mm-hmm. that's on the internet. And they have this little stick guy and, uh, and various uh, drawn figures mm-hmm. and little pieces of paper. Okay. And they explain things like uh, uh, things on the internet that you wouldn't necessarily. I understand. think I have seen those, and they are really cute. Yeah. Yes. And they, yeah. they have Common Craft, uh, and they've got a great uh, slogan. They say our product is explanation. Mm-hmm. And so they they go in and they explain these different little things. They'll tell you what how Twitter works, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever. And I have seen those, and I found them to be really useful and very entertaining. Yeah. yeah, and I like that. I like um, the other kind of video that I personally like is kinetic typography. Yeah, I do too. Right, which if I guess if people don't know what that means, it's basically uh, the use of emotion interacted with words and uh, and and the typesetting and images floating through. And you've seen if you if you if you Google kinetic typography, uh, there's some great ones out there. You can check out. Um, uh, some uh, speeches from uh, Pulp Fiction that are done in kinetic typography. <laughs> They're kind of fun. Yeah, I saw those on yeah. Vimeo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and, and yeah. other ones that are more useful in, in commercial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? Um, so can you tell me what makes a good, for, for business, what makes a good video and, and what, you know, what would you say that, uh, what are some different types of videos that a business might want to utilize? Uh, it is all about um, your goal and your audience. So, you know, the first question is, what do you want to accomplish with this video? Are you trying to generate leads? Are you trying to um, make your sales cycle shorter? Are you trying to um, increase profitability by training your staff? Are you trying to train your customers on something? Do you need to demonstrate a product? So the first thing is, what do you want to accomplish? Um, videos that work extremely well are explainer videos, which help to tell, or process videos. Those are two different types, but uh, process video is going to explain one specific process. It's great for both lead generation and for shortening your sales cycle with prospects. A couple examples of process so, videos. So um, a process, we're working on a series of them right now for a utilities contractor. And um, we've chosen to do 3D animation because it's excavation uh, processes and it's very difficult to film that in a nice way and really explain. But their problem was that they had a hard time explaining with words what these processes were and why they were different than what their competitor does. So we've done, um, we'll have done a series of four within the next month. We're finishing the fourth one up right now. And they just, they're about a minute long and they are very clear, clean cut. Just, uh, we start with that. We do this because of, we do this process this way because of this, we solve this problem with it. It works like this one, two, three. And the end result is this one minute long, clean, simple. That's all that it is. But what it will do is help their audience, which is, um, engineers, It'll help them to understand what it is, and when they look at a budget or a proposal, an estimate, they'll understand why that line item is what it is, what that value is there. So me selling websites, I might do a process video on yeah. search engine optimization. Yes, you could. Yes, that would be a great example. Um, things that are difficult to explain in a paragraph, a video is a minute of video is worth 1.8 million words. That's the stat that they're throwing out really? there. Yeah, it's. Uh, you know, I don't know. They throw video stats out there all the time. That's the one from 2013. Is 1.8 uh, million 1. words. 1.8 million words. Hmm. So, um, so in a one minute video, you can get across what it would take. How many web pages is that? It's a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> uh, what it would take the thousands of web pages to hmm. describe. Um, and they're great, as I mentioned, for lead generation because you could call it. You could call your video. 
SEO or search engine optimization or whatever you want to call it. And then you could talk about how it works yeah. within that video. That's a great, that's great. So I can see that any industry could use that, you know? Yeah, really any industry could use that. And what you'd want to look at to figure out what you would describe or what are your processes that um, set you aside or what are your processes that uh, solve your customer's most pressing problem? So, you know, in this case with the excavation, the problem is they don't want to disrupt, um, you know, traffic. They're going to work in a high traffic area and they don't want to tear the streets up. Right. Okay. So they would be that's the problem that these different forms solve. You know, each one solves a different problem. Each part of this solves a different problem. So that's why they have multiple of these videos. But that's great. So that's a yeah. process video. It's a process and, video. And the other one was... And an explainer video, uh, you've probably seen them. A lot of times they're motion graphics pieces. The mm-hmm. kinetic type can sometimes be an explainer video. Mm-hmm. Um, they tend to be uh, whiteboard animations or explainer videos. Mm-hmm. And it will um, usually it'll walk people through. They're great for things like uh, uh, technology-based companies because it can explain it's not so much about how does this work it's more of this is how we're going to improve your life this is what we're going to do that's going to improve your life so it might be like you know well one there's a this um that i had seen recently and sticking my mind is this coffee time app and it just talks about okay i'm in i'm going to go to my local coffee shop instead of waiting in line i can hit my order in and I can walk right up and pay and pick up my coffee. So mm-hmm. it just walks through what, how it's going to improve my life mm-hmm. as opposed to how does it work? So it just depends. They're two great, simple, short ways to get a message across in an engaging way. And uh, it sets you apart from the, I love overview videos, which would be a little explain, you know, where the business owner is interviewed and you get to know about the business and, those are great, too, for your About Us page, but they're mm. not necessarily great lead generation tools. Um, these are two that are great lead generation tools. Great. How would you utilize those for lead generation? Well, the one way is to create specific landing pages for those videos. So um, you, can, you can make it then very searchable. You know the video is very searchable, of course. So if you create a landing page, then you're going to have a searchable URL that has just that thing that you're solving. So you know, search engine optimization or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So response targeted marketing.com slash search engine optimization. And on that landing page is your video. Now you can ask people, you can say, you know, how it works. If you want to know how this works, put your information in. And so a contact field can come up where people put in their information so they can watch the video. And now you have their contact information, their right. email address, their phone number, their first name, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Now you can follow up and say, Hey, I saw you were interested in that. You know, if you want to via email or call or whatever um or just put them in your database so you know this is someone who is interested in seo that's great so you could have an endless Mm -hmm. number of those based you could have an endless number of those based (laughs) on the number of whatever that you have going on yes i mean i think it would be great for people in you know like chiropractors or other people in natural health to explain different Mm -hmm. um, aspects what they do yeah it is great and then uh what i like uh, about it aside from the fact that it's a you know for us, it allows us to create, to produce in short bites. Nobody wants to see a 15-minute video about mm. everything that you do in your business. Right. Um, what they want to see is, what is my problem right now? I want to see a video that describes how you're going to help. I'm pounding on the table and we're recording. <laughs> um, okay. What people want to see is, what are what can you do that's going to solve the problem that I have right now? I don't want to know about the problems I might have down the road. The other thing is that, so it solves that problem problem of getting people to watch the one thing that gets them to call you right now for this problem. Okay. Um, the other thing that it does is when people watch a, um, some, some people call it video snacking. When some people see a short one minute or two minute video and it grabs their attention and you have a second one and a third one and a fourth one, it's like a potato chip. They watch one, they yeah. watch the second. So, so they're much more likely to consume your 15 minutes of content than if you'd put it in one 15 minute timeline. Mm-hmm. And they're interacting, they are opting in, if you will, to that content. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I love them for those two reasons. I don't know, all those That's reasons. great. I think they're great. Yeah, I found the more education you give a person, uh, you you the the more education basically you help them through their natural sales resistance too. Yes. They start yes. off they start off at a point where they have no idea what you're talking about. You give them a little bit of education, mm-hmm. they kind of come up to 
maybe even being angry about it and then right and then they they start they end up being compulsively interested and they love it and they, yes. they can't get enough of it and and you could do that all with an automated process with videos. very yes very yes it makes it a very automated process i like how you described that that's exactly right you know six years ago uh, everybody that we talked to said, oh, you need an overview video. You need one for our, our your homepage or for your About Us page. Nobody wants to read this story about your business. Tell it to them, video. I think that's still important. Um, but it's not, I don't think it's as important. I think if you're going to invest in one thing, one video project, now I would invest in a series, you know, maybe a short series. Maybe you start with three or four, but a series of these process videos instead or explainer videos instead. That's great. Uh, that's that's wonderful. Great. Uh, what what other kind of videos might a business be using online? Are, there, are those the main ones? Or? Um, uh, those are ones that I find are really useful. Training, of course, I think is extremely useful. Um, sure. which could be customer training through mm-hmm. product demonstrations. Um, it could be oh, you know, a good example is I recently started using Mailchimp, and I'm watching their videos to learn how to use more of Mailchimp, and I'm likely to increase my subscription amount because I'm getting to learn more of the features, right? So that's great. Those types of things are great. Or product demonstrations, if you have a hard product that you're trying to sell, um, you know, a uh, uh, something that you're going to ship to people if you have an e-commerce site, for example, or, um, or something like that, then the, having a product demonstration of how just very simply how to use it, that can increase your sales uh, tremendously. That's great. Yeah, well, we, uh, we don't... We don't monkey around with, with Mailchimp, but we use uh, Constant Contact. Yeah, uh, <laughs> don't uh, monkey around with it. Yeah. We're, well, we're the authorized yeah. local expert for Constant Contact. Got it. Like but uh, uh, Constant Contact just today came out with a series of videos, mm-hmm. uh, which I have not. They just literally showed up on YouTube today. Okay. Uh, they they came up with a series of like. Um, uh, I think it must have been like 10 different videos. Yeah. And I'm thinking about how I can use those uh, to help people get signed up for the product and then yeah. to educate them on how to use it. Yeah. Because uh, it's meant to be a self-service marketing tool. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it's extremely, it embeds video right, right. into it. Right. The whole deal. Mm-hmm. But um, but the videos themselves, just training the customer. Yeah. I mean, wow. Customer service wise, the trouble you could save yourself. You do. Yeah, you really do. So you're going to save yourself money, but you're also going to increase the loyalty of that customer because mm-hmm. they're going to have a better understanding of how to use the product. So for any um, any sort of a software application, any sort of application product at all, I think you absolutely have to have those training videos for your, your customers. And those can be pretty simple um, as long as they are clearly told. They can be pretty simple. Right. Yeah, and that's a big deal. Yeah. One of the things that we stress a lot is um, is not using like words that are over people's heads. Right. Right. <laughs> and we're like big on that too. So I think yeah. that would be a big deal in education and video. Yeah. You know, providing like enough pictures to show what you're talking about so people don't have to work it out in their yeah, head. Yeah, one thing that really drives me crazy is when I see a PowerPoint with um, voiceover up as somebody's video. And not that they're, the problem primarily with those is that they don't change, the, they don't give you enough information on the screen to warrant having a screen there. Hmm. They could have done the same th- thing just through audio or just through a PDF. Um, if you're going to use video, then give people something that they can interact with and, and engage with. So, yeah, you can do something. You can do something with screen captures uh, to do a, a demonstration like that. But you need to move your frame often enough that it keeps up with what you're saying, so people can actually follow it and understand what's going on. That's great. Well, that's it. That um, good. Now you mentioned also uh, search engine optimization. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you said that, uh, you know, video is good for helping you increase yeah. your search engine rankings. Mm-hmm. How, how is it used to do that? Uh, there's a few things that you can do that'll make it. Well, one is that it'll increase your opt-in and your click-through rates like on in email. Mm-hmm. And so um, that can help you to just be seen more often and increase your Google rankings over time. Um, but the other thing is that you have a YouTube channel is a great thing for your business and if you put in the right keywords and you title your videos correctly and you create a 
enough content, then that will help your YouTube videos be seen um, as part of an, a natural and organic search. So the, the things like those process videos, product demonstration videos um, can really help you to content driven videos is what I would say, as opposed to a marketing or branding video can really help you to be seen. Yeah, I was thinking when you were talking, because mm -hmm. putting tags on videos, tagging mm -hmm. is one of the search engine mm -hmm. things that's done. It's very similar to like when you go to a clothing rack and you're looking yeah. for a cut, you know, the tag tells you the color of the shirt, the size, right. all those type of things. Well, the tag on a video, just for people that may not know, uh, or on a even a, a blog or some piece of a website or even a photo, will tell the search engine what kind of video that is. Because mm -hmm. the search engine can't watch the video. Right. So, so it is important yeah. to do that. <laughs> yeah, that was what I was yeah. going to say. Yeah. Is, you know, part of it is just having it and putting it up there, prop properly tagging it, properly titling it. Um, but another thing you can do that increases your SEO greatly is closed caption that video. Mm -hmm. uh, closed captioning is a file that will be attached to the video and it's written content. Oh, wow. And so that will show up and that can even show up as part of the description of your link to your video could be part of your closed captioning. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a good tool because, you know, there are people who are deaf. You might close caption in multiple languages so that people sure. of different languages can choose Spanish or Chinese or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so it makes your video more global. And, uh, and it, it'll help your SEO because it gives them one more thing that they can look at. The search engine is one more thing. A lot of information at. for the search engine. Yeah, yes. that's great. Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking also, um, you know, it might be like in the health industry, you might talk about the symptoms that are associated with mm -hmm. that solution. Mm -hmm. So then you've got a whole other range of things that could be found. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. I guess the possibilities are endless. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a lot going on there. Yeah. <laughs> great. So let me ask you this, what, um, how often, I know we've kind of covered this a bit, but is there anything else you'd say about um, how often or for what or for where people should utilize video? How often? Mm. Use it every day now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would say that when you're designing your video plan, uh, I am a let's get to cash as soon as possible kind of person, business owner. And that's the way I approach clients as well is what what's going to solve your most immediate problem. And it may not be increasing your sales. It might be improving your processes or making your sales team more efficient or, you know, it may not actually be sales related. It might be someplace else where we're going to save you money. Mm -hmm. um, but so I would say, so I'd put together a cohesive video plan that thinks first about what's that, what's, where's that first place where we can see a return and let's use video there. Then now, well, now we start to see a return. So let's think about the next logical place. That's a great approach. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I mean that we're all in business because we want to be profitable or if you're a nonprofit, you are in business because you want to make a difference. So where are we going to make the biggest difference or where are we going to get the biggest sponsor? How will we get the biggest um, sponsorships? Sure. So, um, yeah, so I would say it really depends on your business and your audience. Uh, some businesses like, uh, you know, financial planning, insurance, those things change pretty drastically and people need to be updated. So you might use video every week because you want to update people on changes in the market or changes in that they need to know about in healthcare plans or whatever it is. So it, might, it could be pretty frequently. And, uh, and then there's other businesses where processes, things don't change so much. So it might be more about, um, we get a good, if we're getting a good engagement, we might want to put video out every quarter to our audience. So I really would look at the individual business, what they want to accomplish, who their audience is, and how they can best use video to accomplish that goal. Great. I think it makes a lot of sense. It's the same way we hire people. It's like, wait, is that, what's the return on that? Yeah. It's a return on investment. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's basically what it is, the simplicity of it. What's the return going to be for, mm -hmm. for making that hire? Right. And uh, is it working? And then, I mean, with video, then they can afford to do more. Yeah, right. That that's exactly right. You know, that's our um, some a lot of clients will come to us, prospects will come to us, and they have an idea of what they want already, why they're going to use video, and what they want. And of course, we welcome that. They need to have they need to have buy in, right, as well. But it's a process that we always walk through them 
talk through with them anyway is, okay, well, we want to do that for you, obviously, but let's figure out the best way to do it. So what's the best way to do it? What are you going to accomplish with it? How can we get you there in the quickest, most efficient way? So that's great. Perfect. Yeah. Well, and what would you say is the most um, successful way that you've seen video used to create leads and sales? And re- the most successful way. And all the different video yeah. types that you mentioned. Yeah. What was it? What would you <laughs> say is the the type of video? Uh, you know the explanation. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the process video. The yeah. I yeah. Uh, I really. Uh, I, I really feel like the process videos are the, the best tool for lead generation and for creating um, a sales funnel. Great. It'll work. Great. And you can have as many of those as you want. And you could have, yeah, exactly. You, you should, everything, any process that you have, any product that you have that drives a customer into your door, you should do a video for it. It'll, you know, start, with the, start with your big ones first and then mm. make your way through your list. For the guy that... Um, I mean, I think hiring somebody to get some help is probably a really good idea. Of in this course. Field. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course, I'm going to say yes, because that's my business. Mm-hmm. However, uh, it's also because the time and money that you're going to invest in doing it well, whether you're buying equipment or um, editing software or just the time that you should be spending doing what you do well that generates revenue for your business and that you're going to take away to do video, um, you're not going to see as good of a result. It's not, you know, I mean, I, I don't hire, I, I don't do my own surgery. I don't do my own <laughs> root canals. And that's because I don't really know how to do that. Um, and I think that it's the same thing. You know, you want something to perform well and to get a return out of it, you you're going to make an investment anyway. It makes sense to make the investment with someone who knows what they're doing. Good. Yeah, I agree. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. If uh, let's say that you're uh, you're brand new, you know, you've got no money at all, and you're and you're just getting rolling, you know, mm-hmm. and you're going to make a business of mm-hmm. of it, uh, and you wanted to utilize video. Mm-hmm. Any uh, any tips for the guy who's going to just pick up you his know, this... iPhone and go for it? <laughs> this. Um... This brings me to an interesting story, if you don't mind me telling the story. I had a meeting a few weeks ago with a young man who was starting a new tech business. And he just wanted to pick my brain. And I I had already cleared the hour for him. I didn't know I was doing it for free, but I just said, whatever, I'm here for the hour. So let me hear you out. And he was planning to use video. And when we started walking through why... Do you want to use video? What do you want it to accomplish? In that case, and in the case of a lot of new businesses, video is not going to accomplish for you what you think it will if you don't do your legwork first. Um, so, you know, I would say, you know, if you're really a startup, but you feel like you need video, I'd step back and say, why? What do I think it's going to do for me? Um, it's a fantastic tool, but it's only a fantastic tool if you know what you're going to accomplish with it. And most importantly, who is your audience? If you're just starting a business, you might not know who your audience is yet. So I would go out and find out who your audience is, um, develop your product to your business, uh, pre-sell it, and then invest in the video that's going to help you grow your business further. That's my advice. Yes, you can pick up your iPhone and you can shoot a series of videos. You can put it up there. Uh, The days or weeks or months that you're going to spend doing that would be better spent, in my opinion, reaching out to the people that you think are your client base and finding out if they actually are your client base or not. Yeah. Do a little bit of legwork before mm-hmm. you start, before you jump in that research, that preparatory yes. work. <laughs> yes. Good idea. No, that makes total sense. Okay. To wrap up, what do you think is the mindset or the strategy that you feel would, you know, set you apart as far as your success for, with this tool um, and, and made it so that this has worked for you? I think the thing that sets me apart is that I really do get invested in my clients' businesses, um, which doesn't mean I do the video for free and then take a return when they get it, <laughs> right? But what it means is that um, I take that approach of what do we need to accomplish here? What's going to be the best way for us to accomplish that? So it might be that it's the best way to accomplish that and your budget warrants it and your cl- your audience demands it. It might be that it's high-end animation. And it might be that it's simple, direct-to-camera, lower budget, 
strong messaging. And so I'm going to help you find where that balance is of what am I going to, what do I need to accomplish with this? Who is my audience that's going to help me accomplish that? And what style is going to fit both my audience, my expectations and my budget? Um, And I think that that's what sets me apart. I'm not a, I have no cookie cutter product. Um, I have no cookie cutter budget. I have a history of a lot of years of knowing how to finesse the different parts that it takes to put together a video so that someone can come to me with $5,000, someone can come to me with $500,000, and I can find the right solution as long as I know what that goal is. That's great. That's fantastic. So where can people find you? Um, SolsticeProductionsVideo.com. Great. Should we spell Solstice? Yes. (laughs) S-O-L-S-T-I-C-E. And productionsvideo.com. Amanda, thanks again for coming here today. If you have any questions regarding video and uh, you want to send those to Barry at reallivemarketing.com, uh, send them over regarding video. And, uh, you know, Amanda, maybe you'll join us for another episode if we find out that um, people have other things that they want to know about video. We can, uh, we can do another show where we can fill them in further. Yeah, I would love to do that. Thanks. Great. All right. Thanks for joining us for some real life marketing. Is your website working for you? Is your website getting you results? Do you get daily or weekly leads? You should be. If you're not getting the leads that you need, it's time to reevaluate your website. Get our professional website evaluation. Go to reallivemarketing.com and sign up for our professional website evaluation. Let's get this done today and bring your website up to where it needs to be. Okay, so that was some great information. Now I want to share with you, if you're going to do an amateur video, if an amateur video is the way you're going to go, there's five things that you must keep in mind. Okay, first, you've got to have a script. You will spend a lot of time putting together a video that doesn't make much sense to anyone if you don't have a script to follow. If you can storyboard it a bit, even better. Planning will give you a much higher quality production. Point number two, you need to study similar projects. Find projects that others have done similar to your own by either professionals or amateurs. Study and look for attributes that you like. You'll notice things like lighting that you want to integrate into your production. You may notice certain styles that with a little bit of practice, you can replicate. Point number three, editing. This show would not be as good as it is if it wasn't for our editing. Thank you, Caleb. He does a great job editing the show every week so that we sound very professional. It's worth the time to hire a a professional editor or get the right equipment so you can take the time to edit it yourself, the right software and such. Point number four, cut things in favor of interest or reshoot. So if something's not interesting, cut it or reshoot it in a way that it is interesting. Do not bore people for even part of a minute in your video. You will lose them. There are too many options out there for people these days. They will go elsewhere. So if it's not interesting, cut it or reshoot it and make it better. Lastly, in your amateur video, communication is of primary importance to quality. Don't be so obsessed with putting together a professional video that you forget about the fact that your video needs to communicate what it needs to communicate. Raise your technical quality as high as you can without losing communication. In our show notes today, we've included a link to a book called Art that we feel would help you with this. So I think we've drawn a good picture for you of how you could utilize video better in your marketing. Have some fun, and we'll see you next week for some more real-life marketing. 